Hey, what's happening, folks? It's your boy, now Town Born, coming back at you. Got down watching another exciting uh, Friday Night Fight for 2011. They're keeping the uh, they're keeping the excitement coming, keeping the good fights coming, keeping the good matchups coming. Now, um, just from from the time that I've been on YouTube, I haven't really seen two up and coming prospects that look pretty good fight each other so early. This seems like a strange thing to me, like a rare occurrence. Now they were talking about it being rare. I'm not really sure if it is rare. But it seems real. I haven't really seen, I haven't really seen it before. Usually they wait until they got like you know 19, 20 wins before they start trying to take on the other undefeated guys. These guys only had 22 fights combined together. <laughs> 22 fights combined with with uh, 16 knockouts between them. Uh, what I saw was two people that hit very hard, one person that hits very fast and crisp and has a really crisp, hard jab. Another guy who uh, was just fucking tough as nails, man. Yeah, he got dropped, but if you want to talk about hard, dude got dropped by a pretty strong ass shot and then uh, got back up and got back into the fight. Now, going into the, going into the, last three rounds or whatever, the Spain was looking like he might be in the fight. It was a good fight. Didn't disappoint at all. The lock, the lock walked away with the, uh, with the victory, of course, um, by decision. Now, there was a couple times I thought the lock could get him out of there. I even was texting MTWB during the fight, and I said, uh, that Salak needed to step it up and take this guy out. I thought he could do it, but but like I said, as the fight progressed, every time Salak opened up or he thought he might start throwing a little bit more, he would look good for that moment, and then but the, the Spain wouldn't be going anywhere. Spain would still be right there in his fucking face, hurting him with those shots, whether he says he was hurt or not. He had red marks all over his face. Dude was like, he was respecting the Spain's power a whole lot. And with good reason, because the Spain looked like he was throwing with real, real bad intentions for a while there. But um, the Spain kind of fell apart towards the end, maybe. But also, I saw uh, I saw Salak change his game plan and for the fight, or change the way he was fighting at least on a round by round basis, at least two times during that fight. And that's a pretty good sign for us fighter who's now only had 15 fights who's undefeated his jabs are hard and crisp he doesn't waste too many punches he can let his hands go he does have power he does have speed he can adjust so even for having 15 fights me personally i'm gonna be riding this guy's train for a little while i'm gonna jump on the bandwagon for a little while with him he looks real interesting uh it's guys like this that could really mix the division up and really bring some flavor and excitement to it. I really like watching this guy fight. Uh, it's, it's something when a guy has so much speed and, and skill early in his career and then you add power to that. And uh, I remember when, when people were saying, uh, actually I remember when D-Style specifically was saying and trying to tell people like me who thought Kessler was going to win the fight. Uh, how potentially special Andre Ward could be. And this is kind of how I'm looking at him, at, at the lock. Let me go grab a seat. <sighs> Sorry, good late. Anyway, you've seen a lot of good things from Salah. I saw a lot of good things from Despain, but quite honestly, it looked like a good test for Salak, but Despain, while he is tough as nails and hits hard himself, and even when he starts using the jab, he can work behind it. He's still clumsier, his footwork isn't quite right. He can box, but he's really not going to box with the best of them or even... I'm just saying that unless he, unless the Spain goes back and really works on some stuff, it looks like he's going to be a kind of exciting yet mediocre fighter, which, which 
doesn't take away from his potential to, to actually be a star or a sub-star in the boxing world. There's lots of people who were really great boxers but who had a lot of toughness and hard made it. So I'm not going to dig too far into the thing over that. I will say I do see a real problem in Salak's game, especially when he's going to start taking it up to the upper echelon, to the upper levels in the boxing uh, in his division, and they're already talking about him being just below Pascal and Chad Dawson and Hopkins, and I'm like, ah, pop the brakes. This guy's only had 15 fights, and you're already wanting to, you know, put him just under, give him a two-fight, you know, window. <laughs> if he looks good in two or three more fights, you're going to throw him in there with uh, John Pascal or Bernard Hopkins and Chad Dawson. I'm not so sure that's a good idea. Um, just for one simple thing, and I know it may seem like a minor thing, but when, when you're talking about, say, Chad Dawson, who has really nice angled punches, Ishmael Salak has a real lazy jab. If you don't believe me, or, or watch the fight again at least, and then tell me to watch it again and point some stuff out, but it looked to me like even though his jabs were powerful, crisp, and fast, they, hold on, they came out, they came out, and instead of going right back here, they went down here, okay? And he generally holds his hands instead of holding them up here, like the Spain was doing a pretty good job of. Uh, Salah was more down here, more, more of the chest area, see what I'm saying? Uh, and when he brought his jab out, he brought it right back down here, and that's that's going to be, you're, you're going to be asking for a lot of right hand uh, counters off of that. You're going to be asking for a lot of right hand counters, and uh, the dudes in the top of that division can pack a punch if they want to. Uh, they may not KO you with one punch, but they can hurt you. And while I didn't see a shaky chin from Salah, uh, he needs to work on that at least. Uh, I like everything else. Uh, his footwork needs work, but for where he's at so far, I think I think it'll work for him for now. I think they need to continue to work on it because he seems really good when he's mobile and then picks at spots where he wants to throw his combos out there, and they're really nice. His punches are just really crisp. I'm, I was really surprised at how, how much snap he had, how much pop he had in those punches. I was real surprised that Spain didn't get KO'd, but hey, hey, it is what it is. Um, the only reason I talk about his footwork is because, like I said, in the upper echelon, you come across a better pressure fighter than the Spain because there are lots of better pressure fighters. So you come across a better one, right? He's going to cut the ring off better than the Spain. I don't think the Spain did a very good job of cutting off the ring. You hold your hands low, you get the ring cut off on you, and you don't improve your footwork beyond what it is now. And he's going to find himself in the corner a little too much against people who know what to do a little bit more in the corner. Um, that being said, I don't want to take anything away from Salak by what they were saying, Teddy Atlas and them were saying about putting him up there at five, six, seventh rank in the weight class. Uh, seventh, sure. I guess. He's undefeated right now. He looks real good and he's not really... He looks like he, even, even when he's pre presented with problems, he solves it pretty quick. It tears Daniel Judah in two rounds. Um, so, exciting prospect. Uh, I just worry about some of the some of the technical flaws. But hey, <laughs> when it's all said and done, everybody except maybe Hopkins at that top level has technical flaws. So. I'm not saying he can't compete or, or trying to doubt him in any way. I'm just saying I'd rather not see him thrown in there right away. I'd rather see a couple more fights from him, a couple 12-rounders before he goes in there with Chad Dawson or Tavares Spot. You hear what I'm saying? Or Glenn Johnson, for that matter. I mean, <laughs> anyway, uh, it was a good night of fights. I'm really looking forward to seeing more of Ishmael Salak. Dude is pretty smooth. <laughs> Deuces. Lacey, 
Fuck <laughs> you.